After legalizing forgery and election rigging, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Olukayode Ariwola, speaks out while declaring open the 2023 Conference of Judges of the Federal High Court. He warned these judges not to bring shame. Please guys, watch the video. Remember to like, share this video and leave your opinion in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, while declaring open the 2023 Conference of Judges of the Federal High Court, warned them not to bring shame and tarnish the image of the judiciary. Hmm. Look who's talking. Which judiciary and image is he talking about? The Nigerian judiciary that he leads? The one that politicians have lost confidence in? To the extent that they say they won't challenge election results in court because they already know that the courts will turn the law upside down to the favor of incumbents or the highest bidder. This CJN that openly sang praises of politicians in forums that he wasn't supposed to attend. A CJN that bows to a party chairman and someone that was famed taking thousands of dollars as kickback from a contractor when he was governor of Kano State. A CJN that was accused of abuse of power by a fellow judge, now retired, of course. Why is the CJN not taking his own advice? This is a man who delayed the appointment of justices to the Supreme Court so that the new justices wouldn't disrupt the agenda of upholding Tinubu's heist and forgery. Under the watch of Olukayode Ariwola, judges threw away lawful votes cast by the electorate in the name of justice delivery. Under his watchful eyes, judges uphold forgery without shame. In fact, they descend so low to the level of defending the respondents. One judge had the audacity to say that despite the fact that the certificate was not issued by the institute legally authorized to issue it, that the certificate wasn't a requirement for contesting for governor. Therefore, he and his colleagues upheld the certificate forgery. Hey, what a shameful perversion of justice just because of money. Under the CJN's watch, the Supreme Court led by Inyang Okoro refused to determine the appeal of the Labour Party. They said the Labour Party's appeal shall abide the outcome of Article's appeal. But the petitions are not the same thing. The Labour Party sought different interpretations that are quite different from what Atiku sought in his appeal. Most especially the issue of Tinubu's drug money for feature of $460,000. They were so arrogant that they didn't even deem it fit to release a certified true copy of the judgment to the petitioners. When they were pressed harder, they released a three-page document. Yes, what we are seeing on screen is the certified true copy of their judgment. Three pages for all the constitutional issues the Labour Party raised in their appeal. They just waved all of them away. Saying that they dismissed the appeal is not enough. They have to give detailed reasons and convince Nigerians that the appeal is defective. Why did they refuse to do their job as honorable justices? Was it because they knew it would have amounted to judicial gymnastics if they had gone into details of Tinubu's drug money for future? They didn't want such a precedent to be in their name. Was that why they refused to address the issues? We will never know. Under this same CJN, a judge threw away someone's petition because he used the word purported to describe the results that INEC declared in his petition. It's a free for all. The judges are contesting for who will outdo each other in perversion of justice. So the reputation and image of the judiciary under the current chief justice is at the lowest in Nigeria's history. They don't have any image to protect in the first place. So no judge can take it any lower because they are already at the lowest they can sink. People no longer have any confidence in them. They know that they will dispense justice to the highest bidder as was shown by the appeal court justices that heard the Kanu governorship election appeal. A situation where they had two different copies for any outcome, whether in favor of the petitioner or in favor of the respondent. Anyhow it turns, who is the highest bidder, they will issue you your own CTC. What a shame. Under this same CJN, an appeal court justice deemed it necessary, or was it guilty conscience, 
to defend the judgment he and his colleagues delivered that sacked elected PDP National Assembly members from Plateau State. The Justice Abdulaziz Waziri said this in Yola, Adamawa State, during the 2023 Law Week conference. This is very strange. A judge addressing the judgment he delivered in a public forum. Has this ever happened before? Trying too hard to justify what they did is a little bit overboard. In fact, it shows that they are worried about the travesty of justice. When it suits them, they call it a pre-election matter. When it doesn't suit them, they call it a post-election one. Which one is it? And in this case, he said it's a pre-election and a post-election matter. It's only in Nigeria that judges expend so much energy dwelling on technicalities instead of interpreting the law and applying it. In Nigeria, there's no law that judges will not circumvent with laughable excuses. Who will hold them accountable? Who will hold them responsible for the travesty of justice that they dish out every day? Who will bring them to justice? Everyone is focused on corrupt politicians, but judges are more dangerous. They destroy our democracy more than politicians. Democracy thrives when all parties respect the rules and most importantly, rule of law. When people that are supposed to interpret the law are corrupt and in bed with politicians, there's no hope for democracy. It is gone. So corrupt judges are more dangerous. Have you ever seen a judge condemned to prison in Nigeria? Is it not a fellow judge that will condemn him to prison? They watch out for each other. No matter what a judge does, it's very difficult for him to be punished for it. All he can get is a sack and he will go home to enjoy his loot. This is why Injustice Falola will never pay for colluding with scammers to rob a bank. Yes, after he is sacked, is he not a fellow judge that will try him in court? When judges are corrupt, they corrupt the entire system because it is in their court that criminals are brought and held accountable. So once a criminal is able to bribe his way out, he can't be held accountable. This is the reason for the collapse of law and order in Nigeria. Also, we need to reevaluate the role the National Judicial Council plays because it's like a self regulatory body. The NJC recommends the appointment of judges. They also recommend the sack of judges, which means that no other arm of government can play oversight functions on the judiciary arm. Whatever you do, no matter the amount of evidence you bring against a judge, a fellow judge will free him on technicalities. You remember what happened the last time the secret police arrested some judges, despite the massive amounts of money recovered from their homes. Many didn't even make it to trial. The ones that did, they were not only freed, some are back as seven judges. So they see themselves as untouchable. Once they don't go against the incumbent government, there's virtually nothing you can do to a corrupt judge. In Nigeria, many judges do not understand the concept of justice delayed is justice denied. You will present evidence that proves a politician didn't win an election. All the evidence is before the judge, but he will delay the judgment until the politician is sworn into office and he starts enjoying the benefits of the same office, only for them to sack him after the fact. Although this loophole has been blocked with amendments to the Electoral Act, which set time limits for election petitions, but they still do it in different courts. Any stage of appeal is an opportunity for them to delay justice. Otherwise, how is it possible that all judges are interpreting the same laws, but they always end up with different interpretations and different judgments? Constitutional and election matters are supposed to be cut and dry. No technicality should override them, but they make it look like rocket science Going to a Nigerian court is such a huge burden. There's no justification for their miscarriage of justice. That's why we need to limit the roles the judges play in election matters to just affirmation of a winner, not determining other technical aspects of the election that can make someone who scored fewer votes to become the winner of an election. This is not healthy for our democracy. Elections need to be made more transparent like it is done in other countries. INEC officials must lose their most important power, the power to declare someone a winner. It has to be done by affirmation like it is done in other countries. If judges and INEC officials lose this power 
to declare someone a winner. We will reduce corruption in our electoral system. Yes, no politician will bribe any official or a judge because they can't declare him winner. What's the money for? There's no need. With the use of technology, the system will automatically collate the results after voting. A judge will just be required to affirm the results. Yes, that's all that is needed. With this method of conducting elections, there won't be any need for any politician to go to court to challenge the results. And no one needs to reinvent the wheel. The system exists already and it works in other countries. What we need to do is just to copy them and conduct the elections exactly the same way they do their own. It's going to work, right? We all know that people benefiting from a flawed process will never adopt a transparent election system because they will never win election again. All their winnings and political sagacity rests on their ability to bribe and buy their way to power. It would have been acceptable to Nigerians if politicians who buy their way to power are competent. People will say, okay, since he's doing the job, let him continue. After all, the reason we voted for the other person was to make him work. Since this one is working, let him continue. But that's not the case. Competent people won't rig election in the first place. They won't bribe fellow citizens just to be called president. No, competent people will win elections based on their competence. That's if the election is not stolen. Competent people always come to serve, not to steal. And what made them competent in the first place? Their character, their knowledge and diligence. People who have these attributes will never steal. So this is the consequence of having corrupt people in power. It is all about their selfish interest, not national interest.